morning, Destination Church. So good to be with you. As you can tell, there's, the stage looks a little different. I'm getting ready to have a panel up here with me. It's our, uh, some, uh, some of our other pastors are going to be on stage today, and we're going to talk about Thanksgiving and gratitude. Um, I've, they've looked at some questions, and it's the same questions that you have in front of you. I would say go ahead and get your notes out if you didn't know it. Every week we have notes for you. We want you to be able to take notes, and we want to do the, uh, make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do as well. Can we give our DC Live online family a big hand this morning? It's good to see you. So good to have you with us. I'm going to quickly just talk to you for a moment about a heart of thanksgiving and gratitude. I want to say to you today, uh, it's in these times like this that we're, and, and you'll see it once everybody gets up here, we, we just want to pause for a moment. We literally want to just take a break and, and sit back and talk, and today we're going to talk about thanksgiving and gratitude from a whole other level, and uh, because it is a, this is the season we're going into. We have been in a season where we've been running hard. We've been hit with all kind of stuff from hurricanes to, you know, um, you know, some of you have had deaths in your families, all kind of stuff this year, and we've been running pretty hard, and so we just wanted to take a break for a moment and be in a and position our hearts, really, to give thanksgiving given to the Lord. And so if there was a verse that I would just pull out of scripture, it would be Psalm 107, 1. And you've already heard it one time, but give thanks to the Lord for he is good. I love the New Living Translation has an exclamation point behind it. So that way you can get a little loud bit if you want to, right? And uh, it also says his faithful love endures forever. So I want to tell you just real quick the difference between uh, thanksgiving and gratitude. Of course, I'm not talking about the meal we're about to partake of this week, Thanksgiving, right? I'm talking about Thanksgiving as a word. And so check this out. So we, every week we have what we call a soul tattoo. Our soul is our mind. It's our will. It's our emotions. Like it's how we think. It's how we act. It's who we are. It's our soul. It can carry baggage in it and all kind of other stuff. And so today, if you could walk out of here with one thing, you know, and because tattoos are typically permanent, that soul tattoo. To, it would be this, that gratitude is the foundation that leads to acts of thanksgiving. Think of gratitude as, as a deep well. Everybody say it with me. Deep well, right? From which thanksgiving just overflows. Let's say it like this. Thanksgiving is the outward expression of thanks, right? It's like what we've been doing this morning. Thank you, Lord. It's that place. It's directed towards someone. It's directed toward God for what they've done or what they've provided. It's action-oriented. Like, you're, you're going you know, you're, you're to go after it. That's why you see people in here raise their hands or, or shout or other things. It's action. It involves acknowledgement and appreciation like prayer, praise, or a celebration. All right? That's, that's what we're looking at there. We see that in, in, in verses like Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Praise his name. And that would be, yeah, right, right? We would go after that. On the other hand, gratitude, I'm going to flip the script on you for a moment, right? Because Thanksgiving is more about what we do. It's the act of giving thanks in response to receive blessing, whereas gratitude is an inner feeling of appreciation. Like, we serve, we don't even know how many hundred. It, it was actually thousands of people during the storm in our downtown ministry. And we would see people coming through the line, and they, they didn't have to say a word, y'all. We didn't want anything anyway. We were giving it away. Come on, somebody. But all I'm saying to you is we could see the gratitude in their heart. It's an inner feeling of appreciation. Like it's a state of the heart. It's a mindset that recognizes the values and the goodness in life, whether big, big things or whether very small things. I've learned to be grateful in the very, very, very minute, small things all the way up to the big things. And so it's a, it's a state of the heart, right? Paul would say it like this in 1 Thessalonians 5. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In other words, gratitude is more about, it's how we feel. It, it's the internal sense of appreciation that can inspire thanksgiving. And that's where we want you to be this week. Because we don't know what's going on and what your Thanksgiving's going to be like. Again, some people love, love, love this season. I'm one of those people. Other people are like, I don't like this. Right? And so Thanksgiving is that expression of our appreciation. It's often visible or vocal. Like, thank you. 
so much for this or whatever. Gratitude is that feeling of thankfulness that may or may not be expressed but resides in the heart. And so take this to heart today one more time. Gratitude is the foundation that leads to acts of thanksgiving. Think of gratitude as that deep, deep well from which thanksgiving overflows. As a matter of fact, I was with my good friend Brinson Barker this week. He travels the world. And Brinson had been in Africa. And he had talked to us. He talked to us Thursday about wells. And how many of you know there's a thing called a shallow well and there's a thing called a deep well. In Africa, they, they have wells that go down over 350 feet. And those wells never run dry. But Brinson said the shallow wells that are put in some places, that they run dry all the time in droughts. And so what we want for you today is a deep well from which Thanksgiving overflows. Come on out, guys. Let's get ready. to. We're going to ask these guys some questions. Y'all give these guys a hand as they're coming out. Oh, come on. Just give them some thanks today as they're coming out and getting ready to take their place real quick on stage. And I'm getting set over here. If y'all have never been with us in one of these, we do these throughout the year. Um, nothing like this one quite, I don't think so, but we do these a, a pretty good bit where we'll do interviews and or um, we'll have times where you get to see our staff or wives, all kind of stuff. But today, um, I just really felt so strong to have four of our pastors up here with us. And so, and it, we're going to talk about the same three questions that you have in front of you because we don't want to just answer these questions today. We want you to answer these questions and think about it as they're sharing. And uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Let's start right here with Ricky and go right down the line. All right. So I'm the executive pastor here at uh, Destination. And um, you want me to answer the question you asked us last time? Which one, brother? <laughs> um, yes. Like big thing for the year or big. Yeah. Know, anyway, yes. anyway yeah, so yeah. I, think, I think my big thing is my kid moved here. Uh, Micah and Alexis moved here, um, so that means I get two grandbabies all the time, and Sandy and I are just a little um, over, what's the right word, Sandy? Over, not overwhelmed. Overjoyed. No. We're overjoyed. That's, that's, that's a good word. That's overjoyed. a calm way to You're say it. You're thankful. There's lots of gratitude. There's lots of gratitude there we go. and uh, lots of selfish love, but we're so glad to have them here. That's, that's the big thing that's happened for us. So my name is Jonathan Taylor. Um, my wife Mary and I are the student pastors here. Uh, and what's happened in our life is we had a baby about mm. eight months ago. Uh, it's our first one, so we are learning how to be parents. All right, all right. And I that's like what's it. up. Uh, my name is Tim Bennett. My wife Heidi and I are the children's pastors here. Uh, we are in this cool season where we've been parents for a little while, and I'm holding on to this age, right, because our kids are 10, 9, and 7, and I know that, like, growing up, there's a lot of issues that could come up, and, and but they're out of diapers, and they're, like, independent, and they can go to the fridge and get their own snacks, come on. but they still, they still want to be with us. So it's ah. just a really good season, and we're just trying to hold on to it as long as we can. All right, all right. All right. Um, my name is Johnny Mitchum. I'm the Connections Pastor here. And one of the biggest things that's happened to us over the last three weeks is um, my son, my oldest, our son, got married wow. to uh, Ansley, and we got to do the wedding. Ooh, that's yeah, give him a hand. That's pretty, uh, it's pretty emotional when you get to do the wedding of your, of your son and his daughter um, and his, 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 his fiance, now wife. And so the biggest thing is that, just them, and also adjusting to their grand kitten. Um, we have a grand kitten. <laughs> Baby's next, we're hoping, but we just got to give him some time. So. <laughs> Wow. So um, I know it's Thanksgiving time, guys, and we're going to talk about Thanksgiving and gratitude. But I, I did have one question for y'all this morning before we get started. And, and what do you get when you cross a turkey and an octopus? What do you get, Rodney? Well, come on, somebody. You get enough dr drumsticks for everyone. <laughs> Amen? Uh, yes. I love it. Y'all know I'm looking forward to the food. Amen? And uh, so... Uh, I told the guys, um, you know, that if today if we go, if, we, if anybody goes longer than they know they're supposed to, I brought two things for them today. I brought Big Ben. He's in the house with us, the alarm clock. But the coolest thing that I have is the person that goes too long gets to wear the turkey hat, right? And, I feel targeted. I'm just I'm sorry. Not, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's going to be for, hanging right for here. For good reason. Yeah, he's going to hang out right there with us. Amen. And uh, so as we look at this today, and um, we did want some laughter in here because, well, laughter to do with good like medicine. But uh, as I searched and looked top five things 
top five things to be thankful for in America. If you look it up real quick, this is what um, I'm going to say as a Christian first and foremost. But it's number one is our relationship with Jesus. Number two would be our family. Number three, friends or community. We've learned a lot about community this year. Health across the board, physical, spiritual, and mental health. And then the other one that kind of was a, a, would trip me out a little bit was clean water. But I'm uh, thankful for clean water. And so I guess people have traveled around the world and so they know that. So here we go, Pastor Johnny, starting with you today. Um, we're answering the three questions that you see on your paper. Number one, what are some specific moments this past year when you felt God's provision or care and how did you express gratitude for them? So I think the specific moments that are most recent are when uh, Hurricane Helene hit. And there was definite some need for provision and for care. Many of you went out had no power. We didn't have any power. And so um, our neighbor threw us a lifeline or an extension cord, um, which became our lifeline for our, our, our food. And sometimes we take that for granted. Um, and so we were able to get, receive that. And then another thing that I realized that God is... Um, how he provides those provision and cares through people, like our neighbors. We were able to give us that, and then we made a phone call to someone in West Palm. We said, they said, what's your need? I said, well, we're looking at pricing a generator, and next one we had a generator on our front lawn. Oh, that's so good. And it was so pretty good. powerful, and then after that, um, our, our power came back on, so we're like, who can use, who can use a generator? So we passed it down to, uh, um, to five, to actually two, three, two or three people, and my, my wife said, it's the sisterhood of the traveling generator. Um, <laughs> Because it was crazy how God worked it. We gave the generator, you know, let someone use it within 24 hours, their power came back on. Next person, 24 hours, their power came back on. It was pretty amazing. And the other thing is just God. Um, God knows the needs of our city and our people. And, yes. and there's a bigger need that was going on. And I was like, God, how can we reach these people? And God sent a guy named Chase Kelly to my way. He's here. And just God's using people to help create um, moments in our lives that helps show gratitude towards, the, towards more than just one person. And it's amazing how God can use people to help um, meet needs. And so I just think to be thankful for the people around yes. your life. To have yes. gratitude for them. Let's go right down the line this time. Kim? All right. Uh, well, there was two moments for me that I thought of with this question. And one was uh, when we became the children's pastors here in August, it wasn't something that we planned or orchestrated. But we realized that we've been down here in South Georgia for 10 years. And we've kind of been struggling and, like, kind of pushing through ministry stuff that just doesn't seem like it's didn't seem like it was working or wasn't getting any traction, but, but all along, God was orchestrating wow. and lining this up for us to be able to be here in this season ready for this thing. And, and we didn't come a couple years ago to Destination to become the children's pastor someday. Right? We just came because we loved the church, we loved the people here, and God had this whole plan in mind. So it was just grateful that it wasn't something that that I tried to do. A lot of times yeah. I get in the way of what God's mm, trying to do. Wow. And I was just grateful that he, to, to see his work behind my life. And the second thing was just happened this week. We were in our staff meeting and we got a doorbell ring on the church camera. <laughs> and, and there was a little girl there and it happened to be my daughter. And, and she said, I'm just here to see my dad. Come on. <laughs> And it wasn't for anything. She didn't need money. <laughs> right? She didn't want to buy anything. She didn't want, she just wanted to stop by and say hi. Wow. And I was just really grateful, but also reminded that God just loves when his children just stop by, mm. right? Just get into his presence. They just, they just are there. They don't need anything in the moment. They just want to, they just want to be with him. So um, one moment where, where Mary and I really felt the care of God in our life and his provision was um, when I, we had Greta, um, and that was our first child, and um, Mary, we felt led that she was to take some steps back from, from her work, so, you know, me as, as the guy, I'm kind of doing the math, I'm like, okay, paying for a baby <laughs> with less income, I'm like, the, it's not quite adding up, but, but we knew we heard God, um, and in our obedience and in faith, the Lord just blessed us so tremendously, I mean, supernaturally, like, the, the week that we made certain decisions, you know, Amazon giving us four hundred dollars out of nowhere, Ooh. and and our, my work taking care of me, and and just huge blessings like lined up, um, and and so for me showing gratitude to that was just being intentional in my time with God to tell Him thank you. I think sometimes we as Christians can take it for granted. Um, you know, God knows our heart, and that's true. But He's also our Father, and so He loves to hear us say thank you. Um, and so I just had so much joy in my heart from being able to just say thank you. Hey, thank you for that, Lord. Thank you that that I've never been left wanting. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Mr. Ricky. So it's been honestly been a tough year for the Mills. We've, um, 
we've encountered some pretty pretty wild things. Just to give you a snapshot, this, this all happened within four weeks. Um, Sandy gets a diagnosis. She has breast cancer. Um, out of the blue, her mom passes away suddenly. I get the honor to preach the funeral. We come That same weekend, we come home to the aftermath of a hurricane. Um, and then we start treatment. Uh, she started treatment. I say we because we do this together. I, I'm, I'm intentional to be at everything. So um, just I can't imagine not being there. But anyway, um, so it's been hard. But I'll tell you what, um, it's just like God, right, to balance the equation. So for all the overwhelm of all the other stuff, um, you guys step in. Community happens. And um, I just, it, 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 I didn't know what to do because you were lining up to ask, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? How can I bring you this? Can I bring you that? And then to the point that somebody stepped up and said, let me be the person that manages all of that. So that relieved a huge thing off of us. And then the, I mean, the food, just, I mean, we, yeah, right? The food. And, and then just. Somebody mowed my, is mowing my yard. Somebody is, I mean, and, and I'm sitting here going, I got it. What do I do about this? You know, <laughs> what do I do about this? And God said, nothing. You just sit and receive it. Yeah. And, um, have, you know, till you're on this side of something, you don't know what it's like to be there. You think you do. And you, 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 y'all are great. You're doing all kinds of stuff. But to be the one having to receive has been humbling. And it, but it's also been, been very grateful. I'm seeing gratitude from a whole different perspective. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, all I know to do is I'm just aching for the chance to give it back. Amen. I'm aching for the chance to give somebody what I've received, and um, yeah. So um, we're today again. I want to keep telling you over and over again. This isn't us. This is this is about us, but this is about you. Like these are things you can talk about around your Thanksgiving table or around <laughs> in your home as we're walking through this. So Tim. We'll start back with you, number two. What ways can gratitude transform your perspective uh, even during challenging times? Well, in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Take joy when you face trials of various kinds, because the testing of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be complete, lacking in nothing. Um, And I think the way that we find joy in these seasons is by looking ahead at what God's going to do. Because the joy doesn't come in the thing that's happening in the moment and the struggle. It comes in knowing that Jesus is working in my life, forming me to be more like him. Um, I... We all have songs that we love, but I think that we all have songs that we just don't like all that much, right? And we're instant skips. And for me, one of those songs, <laughs> I hope that I don't ruin this for everybody, but my one of my songs that's an instant skip is Miley Cyrus' The Climb. I just, I, the, the, <laughs> the lyrics, it's not about her, it's about the lyrics of that song. And because in the chorus, right, it says, it's not about what's waiting on the other side. It's all about the climb. And in my head, if I'm not looking to get what's on on the other side, why am I going to climb the mountain? Right? It's all about what's on the other side. And for us as Christians, it's all about becoming more like Christ. All of these things, all these struggles that we face are all about us becoming more like Christ. And when we keep our eyes focused on that prize, like Paul says in Philippians 3, that's how we find joy. Because Jesus cares enough to work on me to get me more like him. Jonathan. That's good. I'm like, keep going, Tim. Hallelujah. Um, Man, I think gratitude transforms our heart by just allowing us to be content. I think that, you know, when you read Paul's writing, like um, like Brother Tim was saying, um, Paul's writing from prisons at times. You know, th- this man's been beaten and, and persecuted, and he's saying, you know, and all things rejoice, you know, and it's like I'm getting a Hallmark greeting card, right, from the guy in prison. This doesn't add up, but he <laughs> has this genuine joy because he learned to be content through Thanksgiving. He gave thanks to the Lord, um, and so when I read the scriptures, I don't just want to read it as information, but I want to be formed by it, right? So when I read that, I know that we have access to that in the trials, in the moments of, of our darkest days. It's wow. like, wait, there's some, there's joy to be had and genuine gratitude leads to genuine joy. So. Wow. Pastor Johnny. Oh, me next. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say the stressful moments, um, challenging moments that we all face. Um, I, I think I like to think back at specific, specific times. We are, um, we had a wedding, and the next day, my, my, myself and my daughter and her boyfriend were at the Atlanta airport getting ready. We were hoping to check in, and as we go to the, the counter to give them our 
to look at the, the thing to check us in because we went from a third party. She looked at me and she said, your plane left two hours ago. And I was like, I go, ah. <laughs> and so in that moment, the, the thing that strikes with me is the scripture anxiety, like be anxious for nothing, but with everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace, because I had a young daughter over here looking at me going, <laughs> no, we weren't. <laughs> And so that started a roller coaster, and you think, oh, then it all got better. No, it all got worse, because I called Wendy, and we were just having some major, major stresses, just on edge. I think she, would, she collapsed in the kitchen of our Airbnb and just had a moment. We just, it, it, was, it, was, it was tough, right? And so we're, we're now getting ready to go back to, to, to Waycross. She's going to stay there with some great friends of ours, and I'm just ill. She's ill. Tim is, I mean, we're all just ill. And as we're walking to get something to eat, and hangry, she said she was hangry. As we're walking to get something to eat, my daughter, 18 years old, says, hey, let's just gather up and pray. Come on. And she got in the middle of Atlanta. We have a prayer circle right there. And she just says, God, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you that you know the plan. It was like, wow. So I think in times to know that these things don't catch God off guard. It doesn't mean that he's, like, happy that some of these things that are stressful happens. But what do we do when those stressful times happens? What's our go-to? Mm. And so that's, that, that helps me a lot, that um, it transforms my perspective to know that he's got it. I, don't, I may not understand it. I may not even like it. But, God, you know better than I do. Excellent, excellent. So if that's you today, before Ricky shares, just remember, you know, how can gratitude, uh, how can that transform your, your perspective in the challenging time? If you're in a challenging time right now. So, Ricky? Not to be the poster child for a challenging time, but, um, <laughs> right? They, they come to all of us, right? It's not that we, we some of us are gifted with it, but um, <laughs> it can feel that way, right? But here's what, here's what I know. Gratitude keeps me from being overwhelmed by darkness. Um, I heard a quote. I'm, I'm the Lord of the Rings guy on the team. I'm the, I'm the nerd. So, um, so <laughs> I just finished um, watching Rings of Power, the series about how all the stuff we saw in the big movies happened. And there's a, there's a quote from one of the characters that seems like almost like a prophetic word to me. And he said, we don't overcome darkness with strength. We overcome darkness with light. Mm. And um, so I think that's what gratitude does, right? It shines a light on what's really important. And so I know that when I, when I start, it was, there's a scripture Tim's going to talk about in a minute about, you know, when you're, you know, count all joy in your suffering because it's working all these things out in you. I didn't like that. God brought that to me one morning. And I was like, what are you doing throwing this verse at me? You know, this is not, a, you know, and he said, but no, this is, this is, let it run its course. Let it do its work. And I think that's because then you find you can be thankful. You can have gratitude. Because, you know, in Isaiah, it says he took wounds in his body mm. for our healing. That's good. He did the work. So when all this junk is coming at me, I have to remember, stop and say, you know, he did the work. Mm. He's already done the work. That's so good. no matter what happens, we won. I've won. Sandy's won. We all win. You know, so when I look at my mom up there with dementia, it's at, at still a bluff. And Sandy dealing with what she's dealing with. And, you know, all these things going on, I can stop and I can say, but... God's got us, yeah. and he will keep us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And so that's what gratitude does. It lights up the truth. I was thinking about this whole thing of challenging times. Uh, some of you know, some of you don't know. So I was running. Uh, I'm going to only answer one of these questions today just a little bit right here. But So I was running a 100-mile run at the, um, in May of this year. I had trained over 13 months for this run. I uh, thought I was ready to rock and roll, go on. I didn't realize it would be the hottest day in the Key West <coughs> with the um, you know, with, uh, with the humidity together, it was about 128 degrees on pavement. It was just brutal. And mile 32, I collapsed. Um, and so uh, uh, they got me back where they thought I would be okay, and then it did not work out. I was like this close to being in full rhabdo, if you know anything about the human body. And so they were scared my kidneys were about to shut down, in other words. So six bags of fluids later, come on, somebody. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, uh, I, uh, they got me back. Everything was good. But I want to say, uh, you know, this is a physical challenging moment for, for me. But, you know, what the, the, the coolest thing about it was I had my team around me, man. My team got me. They immediately got me to who I needed to be with, where I needed to be. I, they immediately got me, ended up, you know, in a hospital, all kind of things happening. But, and then Brian Gay was able to stay overnight with me. I, there, there was never a moment where I didn't know that the Lord was with me. 
And uh, so, and, and it's these, that, and that, that's minuscule compared to what some of these guys are going through up here. But I, I want you to know that, that the Lord, he, he's right there in the midst of that. And so we close today with this question, how does practicing, thank, practicing thankfulness impact your relationship with others and God? And so um, I'm going to start with you, Ricky, and then we'll go to Johnny, and then we'll come back across in here. So I think it, it makes me understand the grace that I've been given. Um, so I had to think about that, right? So I had to think about, you know, what Christ did for me. So what am I doing for others, right? I'm grateful for it. I'm thankful for it. But it's not enough just to have it sitting out here that I'm thankful. What do I do with it? That's what makes the difference. And, and so it reminds me of Philippians 4. And this is what I think about. So I think this is the way Christ looked at me. And looks for in me to pull the good things out, right? He says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's anything excellent, Mm -hmm. if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. And I just put the word, I would call out these things. So so what I do when I'm with other people, I do my best to, to look for what God sees in them, right? To call out the best that God's put in them. You know, and that's how I pray. If I have if I'm in a situation that's 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 tough and it's not it's not the situation I want to be in, I immediately try to stop somewhere in myself and say, God, what do you see? What do you see in this person? You know, and and let me call that out. Let me encourage that. Let me speak life to that. So um, that to me is the power of, of gratitude. One of the things I think is real important is the word practice. Um, it's a discipline. To practice when I wake up in the morning, I try to say thank you, Jesus. Um, used to be thank you, Facebook, but um, we've grabbed for that. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for this home. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for these people in my life. I look across this building. I'm so thankful for some of you. Yes, yes. You've been a part of my life. You've been a part of an Ironman group. You've been a part of a small group with me. You've been walking with me. I am so thankful for you. And I think just like Ricky said, to express that. Let people know. Sometimes they need to hear that more than anything else. Tell the people at, that work at the, re- the restaurants and the people that work fast food and are working on Christmas Day or on Thanksgiving Day when you go, tell them thank you for sacrificing your time. Just I'm telling you when you say that, it changes. It can change the room. It can change the rest of their day when you, when you allow that to happen. So I think practicing it, it is so important. And it affects my relationship with Father. Um, just be, by trying to live in that moment, but then seeing people just allowing just to say thank you, um, it just means so much. Um, it, it invites me and gives me opportunities to share where my hope comes from and where my joy comes from. Uh, we travel down to CAM the third Thursday of every month, typically, and it's a, it's a group of ministers that meets in Valdosta. And this, this past week, they put up a picture of a, a desert looking place and it had one tree in it that had life in it one tree that was green from the up from looking at that surface there was no reason for that to be green there was no life source there was no pond there was no water source there the water uh, was underneath the ground where the roots were tapped into it and in our lives when we have joy in the midst of struggle when we are looking at the prize that Jesus calls us to um, we get inv- asked questions. What, why? How can you be joyful? How can you be grateful in this season? And it's because my roots are tapped into the Come life. Come on. Wow. My, yeah. my roots are tapped into something. It's Jesus in me. It's not on the surface. It's Jesus in me. So the surface may look bad. Things may look outside, but Jesus is still the same. He never changes. So for me, practicing thankfulness impacts my relationship with God in the sense that that the presence of God and and the manifest presence of God. So when you feel it, when the Lord chooses to make himself known in a moment or in a place, you enter into that place through thanksgiving. Um, The psalmist would write it this way in Psalm 100, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. So there's actually, there's a way and there's a code of conduct when it comes to being with God. And, And the Lord tells us in the Psalms to enter with thanksgiving. So when you come in, say thank you. Um, so, so you might be able to say it this way, that praise is the password to his presence. Yeah. So when, when it comes to my quiet time alone with God in the morning, if I'm entering, if I'm walking in with my issues and my bluck and the fact that I don't want to go fry chicken at 545 in the morning, right? If that's how I approach <laughs> the Lord, right? I work at a chicken restaurant. It's okay. So you're like, wait, what? Um, if that's how I approach the Lord, 
I'm not going to walk out of there the same way. But if I approach the Lord with thank you first, all of a sudden I'm not just in my room, I'm in his presence. And that impacts my relationships with others because I'm no longer coming with just me, but I actually have the power of God with me. I have the presence and the peace of the Lord. Um, and that you can actually transfer that and give that to people through thanking them. Um, literally, you, you can see people when I'm at work and there might be someone who's kind of having a hard day or they have their guard up and a, a moment to look them in the eyes, hey, thank you for working so hard. You can just see that guard start to drop and, and people open up because I, I'm not just saying thank you. I have the, the power of God on me. So. Amen. That's good. That's excellent. And so today we're going to, uh, you know, as we're closing out, one more time for you, gratitude. Remember, that's what we're talking about. It's the foundation that leads to acts of thanksgiving. Think of gratitude as that deep well. You've heard every one of these guys talk about giving. So we're giving thanks to the Lord. We're going to give thanks back out. And uh, it, it's from which thanksgiving just overflows. And so this is how we're going to close this today. We're getting ready to stand up. And uh, you can go ahead and stand up as well. Of course, we're going to close out with a song in a moment. But before we do... Um, I, I want to close like I used to close a lot of youth services. I was youth pastor for many, many years, but I want to close with, um, I'm going to let each one of these guys do like, a, I called them popcorn prayers. Come on, it's real quick, a prayer of gratitude or thanksgiving over you today. Because we need this going into Thanksgiving, going into this week. And so I'm going to start with Pastor Johnny, and we're just pray over you. And, uh, and then uh, we'll get ready to go into this song before we get ready to close out service. All right, let's pray. Father, I, I just thank you for this morning. And, and God, missing a flight is nothing like missing a grandma. Come on. Or a father or a friend. And so I just I ask that, God, in the moments that we would be sensitive to those around us. I'm thankful, Father, for your presence. And I just speak peace over everyone here, Father, today and around the homes and families and situations in Jesus' name. Father, we're so grateful for everyone here who has made the choice to come and be with your people in your presence this morning. And there's lots of stuff outside, lots of challenges that, that would keep us from coming here, uh, just things that happen that would keep us from coming here. But, but we've made good choices to become closer to you. And Lord, I pray that through this season that we would make the choice to be grateful, that we would make the choice ahead of time to look at what you're doing and how you're working through um, all of these circumstances to make us more like you. Yeah, Father, we just thank you so much for sending your son, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for your blood that you spilled on the cross, Jesus. And I just thank you, Lord, that as we enter this holiday season, God, we're walking into families, we're walking into um, workplaces and hard situations, good situations, Lord, all of it. We're walking into it with your presence. We're walking into it with your peace, Lord. So I just plead the blood of our whole church family and thank you, God, that you walk with us. Father, I too thank you. I thank you that, that you first loved us, Lord, that when we didn't even know we were lovable, you did. So God, I pray today, Lord Jesus, that same love would just come through us, Lord Jesus, back to you. God, we would honor you in everything we do, and, and not just on Thanksgiving, but every day, God. So wherever we go in these, in these coming weeks, God, every place we, every room we step into, God, we look for you first. God, we listen to your voice first, God, because we're thankful that you go with us everywhere we go. And so I just thank you, God, we'll be a grateful people, and we'll honor you with, it just, not just, not just with emotions, and not just with words, God, but with our lives, Father. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, because you make it possible. And Father, we just one more time just give you thanks today for you are good. We thank you that your steadfast love endures forever. So I pray for every person here, God, as they go this week, Lord, I pray they would go with gratitude in their heart and it would be louder than the chaos around them. Father, I pray for your unshakable goodness, Lord, that it would anchor them this week and by your enduring love, God, you would fuel their courage to live boldly and to love deeply this week in Jesus name amen and amen can we give this guy, these guys a hand I love getting to serve with them so grateful for them this morning and so as we get ready to close right here today just a, a couple of things for you we're gonna we're getting ready to have a worship song and uh, we're gonna sing one more song with you um, this morning together in a place of thanksgiving and as we do that today also, just want to remind you that the stations are wide open. 
Man, if you're here with your family, no better time than to take of communion in this moment, in this song. And uh, also, there's crosses back there if you're new to D.C. Um, those crosses on, on all of our, um, in every corner of the room, what you have is a cross. And there might be something that's holding you back from having a heart of gratitude or a heart of thanksgiving. And if that's you today, hey, write something down on one of those pieces of paper, pin it to the cross today and walk away from it. Say, I'm going to be thankful this week, right? There's also candles back there. Those candles are uh, for you and uh, for all of us, actually. And maybe your fire is not where it needs to be with the Lord. It's not white hot for Jesus. Uh, That's the first thing that has to happen in order to be a thankful person, I believe. I lived 21 years of my life not knowing that. And so I know all about it. So if that's you today, no better time than to light that candle, believing for God to make you your fire white hot. And or if you're praying for someone else, you're going to be around a lot of family members that may not know Jesus this week. You know, light a candle, believe in God that they're going to get saved, right? And uh, also our prayer team's up front. If you need prayer for anything, maybe you're the person with the right need that uh, we believe that God's touching and healing right now. Hey, come up and let them pray for you prayer card and there's also a prayer card in the seat back in front of you you can write your prayer request down but before we step into this song one more time can we just bow our heads because this is what I just realized is that if you're here today and you don't know Jesus it's really hard to be thankful and have gratitude at the level that some of us have because because maybe you don't know him today and his heart is to your heart today And if that's you this morning, just right there where you are, the word is very clear. Call upon the name of the Lord that you would be saved. And just right there where you are, just say Jesus. Like Jesus, you could say it like this. I need you. Jesus, I need you. I need your grace to forgive me today. I need your love to change me today. I want to know what it's like to be such a thankful person. And so thank you today, Jesus, for your amazing love. Thank you for giving me life and for giving me eternity. But above all, Jesus, thank you that you shed your blood to cover my sin and that you died on the cross for me. Jesus, today I accept you as my Lord right here and right now, and I accept you as my Savior. And that means I'm a Christian. That means you live inside of me by the power of your Holy Spirit. I belong to you, and I want to live my life for you. And I know that, um, that I want to love you forever. So thank you for loving me today. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, place of freedom as we get, our, get ourselves ready to get out of here and sing this song together. I always say, wait, don't walk. Like, ask the Lord, God, what is it you're saying to me through this message? What do you want me to do about it? Come on, let's worship this morning. He, he wants us to be free of everything that we have.
a couple of things as you're on your way out. Remember, our worship team will continue to worship. Our prayer team's still up here praying if you need prayer. Don't forget, we have a few angels left. If you want to pick, uh, pick up one of our angels to get a present for a child for Christmas, we have slots left for you to be able to serve at Turkey on the go uh, for, the, you know, for this week. Hey, and we're so excited that you're with us. Have a heart of thanksgiving and gratitude today as you go out of here, but as you go into your week with your family. God bless you, D.C. We love you. Have a wonderful week.